I wish it. How do you feel, Annie? It's just said seven. She was fine at dawn. She's sweating, but she's cold. Is this what she's passed? It's white. Susan, look at it. What, what do you think it is? Do you know what it is? Drop. Just drop. She's squinting. It's nothing. You tell them I'll never speak to you. I'll not have my girl go in that van. Do you hear me? I might as well put her in a hearse. I'll put her in a box half naked. With the blankets left from the last one. She goes in that van. She's never coming back. Do you want me to stay? Just keep the kids out. They're down by the river. Just keep them out till it's over. In the cellar of number 23, Back Oak Street, Anne Hannah, eight-year-old daughter of an unemployed weaver, was dying because of the cholera epidemic that had hit the poorest parts of the city. We know about Anne because of a local doctor, Henry Galter. He wrote a book about the cholera epidemic, which gave us a detailed picture of working life in Manchester in 1832. We had known the disease was coming. It had swept across Europe like a, like an enemy no army could hold back. It was in London, Belfast, Liverpool, Glasgow. We knew it would not pass us by. So two months ago our Board of Health inspected the poorest parts of the town. And what we found there, such scenes of filth, crowding, disgusting habits, drunkenness, and in some districts such wretchedness, hunger. So much that when the report was finally published, many of our more comfortable citizens said that we'd slurred the good name of the city, for painting a picture quite so grim. As the epidemic spread, Golter plotted the first 200 cases on a map, and he visited the families involved to question them to try to pin down the cause of the disease. He knew that cholera affected poor people more than it affected rich people. In Back Oak Street, three days after the death of Anne Hannah, he found her younger sister Margaret was sick too. Margaret Hannah, aged four, very delicate, half famished, seized Monday, July 23rd, 7 a.m. I'm sorry to ask these questions at such a time, you understand? No, she'd not been with her sister. Not when I was sick. But no, it was too quick. Margaret were out playing at the time. Uh, and then in the afternoon, they came for her, for Anne. Took her to the hospital. Don't know who told them. It was for the best. So, Margaret never saw her sister again. No contact, then. Has she eaten? Margaret. My husband's not worked these two months. If I have food, it goes to my eldest. I gave Anne porridge the night before she went, and buttermilk. And now I see that we're wasted. Margaret's had nothing. No one at this stage knew exactly what caused cholera. Some people thought it was contagious, but you caught it from other people. But people like Galter had made the connection between cholera and the poor conditions in which these people lived their lives. The poor quality of the food they ate, the overcrowded housing and the bad sanitation. Many of the streets Galter found cholera victims in were streets of back-to-back -back houses. Many doctors believed these houses were the cause of diseases like cholera because they believed bad air was trapped in them. In fact, 
The real problem was the lack of running water, drains, lavatories and refuse collection. This house, for instance, number six, Jordan Street. It's blocked in from the side and the rear. There's only one source of air and light. The rubbish they have to carry through the house to the front. But because the streets are so narrow, the rubbish cars can't fit, so the filth just sits there. The distance here, look, between two facing houses, just 14 foot. Each house had just two rooms, one up, one down. And the cellars, some of which were as small as 12 foot by 14, the landlords rented out separately to make even more money. I have seen whole families, six, seven, eight, sleeping on the floor, no furniture, in one cellar. The children, half naked, half starved, and the smell of it, it's indescribable. Where is the privy? Down by the bridge. And how many people use it? Eighty? A hundred? And what sort is it? Is it a hole in the ground or does it overhang the river? A hole. And how often do they come on to take away the filth? Does it overflow? The problem was that until 1830 in Manchester, Builders could build what they liked. There were no building regulations. Workers were flooding in from the countryside to the towns, and they needed somewhere to live. The builders wanted to make maximum profits, so they built back-to-backs to cram more and more people into less and less space. These local maps show the speed of development. In 1794, Back Irk Street didn't exist. The area was mainly fields. Over the next 40 years, by 1831, the fields have become narrow streets and courts. How long have you been here? Two months. Our, um, our village were being cleared. They gave us free passage on a barge. Once we'd left, they pulled down our cottage. Did you know what to expect? Work. And did you find work? Susan took me to the foreman. I am lucky. I've got small hands, you know, with the spindles. So you stay here with Susan? She has a husband and the children. It, it would not be right. I, I am in uh, lodgings across the way. First it scared me, you know, sleeping with strangers. But now they don't seem so strange. Men and women? No. No, it, it is a decent house. Well, not like some. But Mrs Hopkins has seven men and women in the one room and not the same surname between them. You have done well. Throughout Britain, over 31,000 people died in this cholera epidemic, 900 of them in Manchester. Most of them lived in houses like this, built next to stables, slaughterhouses, factories. Because there were no building regulations, builders weren't forced to provide sewers, toilets or water supplies. Many poorer families had to collect water from canals or rivers. People even stole water from private water pumps, then used it so sparingly that it became even dirtier. Over 30 years later, by 1867, it was accepted that the cholera germ was in the water, something Henry Galton never knew. But his work helped to prove the link between disease and poor living conditions. It seems to me when you examine the conditions of our working poor. But the truly remarkable question is why so few should have died? Walk down Back Irk Street, for instance, and note how outside the very door of number 23, 
in which house Anne and Margaret Hannah died. The sewer bubbles up through the crumbling masonry, flooding the street in a stinking mass of excrement. Now, is this not the perfect soil in which disease would grow? Frankly, I can see no reason, all things considered, why we should have escaped quite so lightly.